Chapter 4 Cole knew he had to get away, but for a moment the shock of discovery held him paralyzed. His only chance was to run. They were on an empty prairie at night. If he went far enough, fast enough, maybe the kidnappers would lose him. When the crouching redhead reached under the wagon, Cole rolled the opposite way. Springing to his feet, he took off, passing other wagons and jumping a sleeping figure. Bundled in a worn blanket, intruder, went up the alarm from the redhead. On your feet, intruder. Don't let him get away. The shouted words fed Cole's panic. Men all around the encampment cast aside their covers and scrambled to their feet. Racing toward the open prairie, Cole saw two men running parallel to him and a little ahead, gradually con. Verging. Both were faster than him. If he kept going straight, they would have him, so he abruptly doubled back, hoping to streak through the camp and shake them in the confusion. The change in direction only revealed the redhead coming at him from behind, along with several others. Lacking better options, Cole swerved toward the nearest wagon, grabbed the bars, and climbed on top. The fingers of the redhead brushed his heel but failed to grab him. Crouched atop the wooden roof of the wagon, Cole couldn't see his pursuers, but he could hear them coming. From all directions, Cole had never been the fastest runner. But he was a confident climber. Heights had never bothered him. There was another wagon parked not too far away. With a running start, he jumped to the next roof, barely clearing the gap. He's moving, shouted a gruff voice. Cole ran across the wagon and leaped to the roof of another, landing in a sprawl, one thick against the splintery wood. Rising to his knees, he realized that he had reached the end of the line, unless he turned around, there was no other wagon within range still on the move, a voice boomed. He's on this one. If he stayed put, they would take him. Cole ran and jumped from the roof as far as he could. As the ground rushed up to greet him, he saw men coming at him from off. To one side. Cole tried to land running but flopped painfully. Forward into the dirt instead, the impact jarring his bones. Driven by adrenalized panic, he scrambled to his feet just in. Time for a large body to tackle him from behind. All the air whooshed from his lungs as Cole was pinned. Beneath the bulk of a large man who stank of leather and sweat. Cole squirmed, but calloused hands held him firmly. Dirt filled his mouth, and a thorny weed prickled against his temple. Other men gathered around him. Then the men hushed one another. A light approached. Accompanied by footsteps. Craning his neck, Cole saw Ansel, a lantern in one hand. He wore his wide-brimmed hat, a long underwear shirt, pants with suspenders, and a dusty pair of boots. In his other hand he held a sickle. Cole closed his eyes, dread coiling inside. The boots halted a pace away from Cole's face. What? Have we here, that dry voice asked. Cole opened his eyes and kept silent. Found him under a wagon, the redhead reported. Must have slipped into camp. Ansel crouched down, setting the lantern on the ground. The nearby brightness made it hard to see Ansel's face. Time. To fess up, Scarecrow. Slipped into camp from where? Just passing through, Cole tried. 
one of the girls said he was planning an escape, the redhead volunteered. She ratted him out. Ansel asked. Sure did, the redhead said. Ansel nodded. Good for her. She might make a go of it. Here. That little darling deserves a reward. We have any of those cookies left? The frosted ones. A few, a voice answered. She gets them all, Ansel said. Give her the royal treat. Meant the rest of the way to five roads. First served, largest. Helpings, front wagon whatever we can do to make her. Comfortable. Cole hoped the cookies would give her food poisoning. But he kept his mouth shut. Ansel stood, picking up the lantern. Let him up. The man let go of Cole and got off him. A rough hand. Grabbed him by the collar and hoisted him to his feet. Ansel. Studied him through eyes so narrow, they almost looked. Closed. Were you planning to steal my slaves, Scarecrow? Cole glanced at the sickle the wicked curve of the blade, the sharp point. He wasn't sure what this guy wanted. To hear. You took my friends. You're from over there, Ansel said. From outside. You. Came through with us. How'd you slip away? Cole didn't want to tell Ansel that he had come through. After them. The Wayminder had helped him, and Cole wore. Ride the truth might get him in trouble. In the confusion, I. Hid behind one of the stone trees. Ansel glanced at his men. I'm less than overjoyed to. Hear that. We had people in place to prevent that kind of. Sloppiness as we welcomed you to your new home. Where are we? Ansel grinned. Not a happy grin. It was the grin of a killer. Who knew the police would never find the body? That's the question, now, isn't it? See, we're not in Arizona anymore. We're not on Earth. I'm no astronomer, but this might not. Even be the same universe as Earth. We're in the outskirts. Junction, specifically, between the five kingdoms. And that means you can kidnap people. Ansel glanced at his men. Scarecrow has the right. Questions. The lantern swung a little, squeaking. In. Arizona, yes, I stole your friends and in those parts they might find me guilty. Your problem is, we're not there no more. Once we reached the outskirts and marked those kids, they became our property according to the law of the land here. And by trying to take my property, Scarecrow, well, you made yourself a criminal. Cole felt sick. How could they accuse him of wrongdoing? For trying to help his kidnapped friends? Everything was upside down. I don't know the laws here. Ansel chuckled, and his grin almost became sincere. Wouldn't that be nice, fellas, if you only had to keep the laws you knew about? I'd spend my life traveling, and I'd Stay as ignorant as possible. He eyed Cole up and down. You working alone? Cole almost laughed backslash you guys better watch it. My backup. We'll be here any second. Ansel became expressionless in a scary way that wasn't. An answer. One more try. You working alone? Cole nodded, yet. Yeah. I'm alone. Nobody else got away. If you lie to me that'll be it. I'm not lying. They stared at each other in silence for a moment. What are you going to do with me? The grin returned, cunning this time, you tell me. 
Scarecrow. Cole swallowed. All eyes watched him expectantly. I. Become a slave. Ansel held his sickle higher, his eyes caressing the blade. My vote was to take away your hands and feet as an example. Slavers can't have people swiping their merchandise. Bad for. Business. But Scarecrow you caught me in a good. Mood. How often does that happen, fellas? All the other men found some place else to look. Ansel stepped closer to Cole. Notice how they don't. Answer? Well, that's your answer. But we made a fine haul. Tonight, best in a long while, so I'm going to grant your wish. And take you as a slave. He raised his voice, calling over his. Shoulder. Sitcha. Tag him. He'll walk behind the rear wagon. Tomorrow. No food or water. We'll let him keep his extremey. Ties, but that don't mean we got to coddle the boy. Show's over. Now let's get settled again. We start our march in the morning. Ansel retreated several paces, boots crunching over. The dry ground. The woman who had eaten the cockroach. Approached with a lantern of her own. She held it out toward. Cole. You're the one that swung Vower bag at the lantern. Cole nodded dot she gave him a penetrating stare. Cole glanced away. Look me in the eye, young man, Sitcha said. He stared at her. She leaned in close, never breaking eye. Contact. Her fingers contorted into weird positions. Then. She examined his hands front and back. Worst of the lot, she said. No shaping potential at all. The High King won't pay a lead ringer for this one. Ansel shook his head. Had I known that, I would have. Made an example of him. Still could, Sitcha said over her shoulder. Nat, I already passed judgment. Following the wagon. Will suffice. Ansel walked off. Be glad I'm not in charge, Sitcha told Cole. I would. Have fed you to Karnag. What's Karnag? Cole asked. The men guarding him chuckled at his ignorance. Sitcha frowned. Depends who you ask. The reports. Are mixed. But consensus has it that Karnag is a monster. Like we've never seen anywhere in the Five Kingdoms. People are scared. We're not too far from Sambria, where? The monster has been prowling. You're right, Cole said. I'm glad you're not in charge. Let's get the bond mark on you so I can turn in, Sitcha. Said. Hold out your hand. Cole briefly considered resistance. But two men stood. Right behind him. For all he knew, if he made a fuss, Ansel. Would return with his sickle. Cole extended his left hand. Sitcha produced a drawstring bag and opened the mouth. The third finger on her left hand had an extra long nail. She dipped it into the bag. Hold still, she told Cole, then turned to one of the men. Help him. One of the slavers grabbed Cole's arm just above the wrist. The other man braced himself against Cole from behind. Cole clenched his teeth. If they were holding him. Like this, it meant the mark was going to hurt. He tried to. Ready himself for the pain. When her fingernail touched his wrist, it felt extremely. Hot and cold at the same time. He wanted to vank his hand. Away, but the brawny redhead held him tightly. Sitcha moved. Her lips as she traced a simple pattern with her fingernail. Then she backed away. 
the bond mark she had drawn blazed. An angry red. It still felt hot and cold, though not as intensely. As when her nail was in contact with his skin. Try not to touch it, Sicha advised. You'll slow the... Healing. She turned and strode away. With a vice-like hand on his shoulder, the redhead marched. Cole over to the rear of one of the cages and chained him to it with a tight manacle on his unmarked wrist. Not a sound, the redhead threatened. We'll reorganize. The slaves according to value in the morning. The best go up. Front. You'll walk behind the last wagon. Better sleep. Long. Day tomorrow. The redhead walked away. Cole didn't know any of the kids in this wagon. They were pretending to be asleep, but he had seen two of them peek at him. Cole got down on the ground. He had no blanket. They Earth was lumpy and hard. The chain wasn't long enough to let his hand rest on the ground, and his wrist dangled about. Four inches up. He couldn't see Dalton or Jenna. Their wagons were lost. In shadows, and he had no desire to draw more attention to himself by calling out to them. The night grew quiet again except for the pop and crackle of the campfires. Less than half an hour ago, Cole had watched the camp from a distance. Many options had been open to him. He wished he could rewind time and do it over again, but it was too late. Now he was a slave like the others. What kind of slave would he be? Would he labor in mines? Busting open rocks with a pickaxe? Would he row slave ships? Would he work farms? Would he fight in a gladiator arena? All of the above? None? He expected he would have answered. Sooner than he wanted. Cole closed his eyes and tried to relax, but sleep was a long time coming. <laughs>